and mm -hmm. you note all the English verses uh, versions, all the English mm -hmm. translations prior to the King James. Why do you think all these, uh, a lot of them Catholic translators, yeah, and yeah. and some Protestants translators, yeah. Why do you think yeah. they had no issues rendering logos as an it, as you can see here? Time well, and time because they were smart enough students to know that that's what it meant. And being Roman Catholics, they could wear two hats, which I can't do. They could say, well, if you ask me what the Pope says, I'll give you this answer. If you ask me what John said, I'll give you a different one. I don't think that's honest. They will have to deal with that in the judgment. However, they're good scholars. And as you say, they fully well knew that Logos is a masculine gender grammatically, and this is what the public doesn't always know, grammatical gender is not the same as sexual gender necessarily at all. The table is feminine in French, and many examples. But Logos is masculine gender grammatically, but your word is not another person. Your word is you expressing yourself. Uh, actually, James Dunn, and here's a, a good example of books that you should read. If you really want to know this stuff well, read James Dunn's uh, Uni Unity and Diversity or his Christology in the Making. They're must-reads for anybody who wants to be a teacher in this field. And James Dunn says that Christ is being identified in John 1 not with a pre-existent being, but with the creative power and action of God. There is no indication, says James Dunn in his Christology in the Making, page 254, 254, there's no indication that Jesus thought or spoke of himself as having pre-existed with God prior to his birth. Most interesting. Absolutely. The thing is to start with Matthew and Luke, who gave full chapters to explain how Jesus began to exist. So once you start saying he was really Michael the archangel, or pre-exists as God the Son, you're contradicting Matthew and Luke. I don't want to risk that. Start with Matthew and Luke, and then see what the options are in John, and it all becomes rather easy. Right. Um, and it's also interesting uh, to note, Anthony, that uh, when I did a little research on the Spanish, in yep. the history of the Spanish translations, all the Spanish translations prior mm -hmm. to the 1602 Reina Valera rendered uh, the word in, in Spanish, it's palabra, mm -hmm. as such, as palabra. Mm -hmm. En el principio era la palabra. And, and the reason that's important is because when the Reina Valera changed it to verbo, which mm -hmm. is uh, another masculine uh, uh, gender. Newton, uh, Newton in German. Right. Yeah, sorry, so, Newton in Latin. In Latin. Right, Newton. in Latin. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the reason that's important is because when the translators before the Reina Valera properly rendered logos as palabra instead of verbo, verbo is verb. Mm -hmm. It's like English, you know. That's not even a, a right <laughs> translation of, of the logos. No. Logos in Spanish is mm -hmm. palabra. And the reason mm -hmm. that's important is because uh, it's followed by um, uh, she, Mm -hmm. uh, ella era en el principio, which means she was in the beginning, literally in English. So obviously there's no sun there, right? So no. that, that's what happened with the...